Welcome to the thrilling world of dangerous game adventures. Dive into the heart of the dark continent where each moment pulsates with excitement. Witness the raw, untamed beauty of nature and feel the adrenaline surge. From the shadows of the wilderness to the echoing roars, every episode is a new chase. Dangerous Game Adventures, where the wild calls and adventure awaits. Welcome to our journey with Derek, Drake, and Mallory, three adventure enthusiasts from the United States. These thrill seekers are heading to the Caprivi Strip in Namibia, guided by the seasoned professionals, Mulan and Lo. Their collective goal? to each bag a hippo during their 10-day safari with Game Trackers Africa. Yes, you heard it right, each of them is aiming for a hippo. Sounds like a challenge? Well, it sure is, but this is the Capri V and hippos are abundant. Buckle up for an unforgettable safari adventure. The Caprivi Strip in Namibia, a unique destination that our adventurers have chosen for their quest. This sliver of land in northeastern Namibia is a world apart, boasting lush wetlands and a rich tapestry of wildlife. It's a place where the mighty Zambezi and Okavango rivers meet, breathing life into the region's diverse ecosystems. Among the countless species that call the Caprivi home, the colossal hippopotamus stands out. These aquatic giants are a common sight here, wallowing in the region's tranquil waterways. Yet, witnessing a hippo on land, especially a lone bull, is a rare and thrilling spectacle. Guiding our explorers are Milan and Lo, professional hunters who know the Caprivi like the back of their hands. With their expertise, Derek, Drake, and Mallory are in good hands as they embark on their 10-day safari each aiming to encounter the formidable hippo. The stage is set, the players are ready, and the Caprivi Strip awaits. Our adventurers, led by Malan, spot a lone hippo bull on land. Good job. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, if on land, that doesn't have, huh? If on land, that doesn't happen every day. Really? Yeah. That's the best way to bump you. Yo. Uh, my shooting. Good. Uh, yeah, perfect. 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 Thank you. Nice shot. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. Wait. Very good. Because your, oh. yeah, your picture had it low for yeah. the pier. Yeah. So I aimed right here. Yeah. How old do you think he is? Um, let's check. I don't know. As old as he will get. Look at all those scratches on his back. It's from all the fighting. 
Te ti se. Wow. It's our first uh, trip to Africa and our first trip to Namibia. It's such a beautiful country. We've had such a great experience, um, both with uh, game trackers that have set up and arranged everything from start to finish. They've been excellent to work with. We love the people here. We love the culture. We love the food, everything about it. Very exciting huts. So we're having a wonderful time. This episode is brought to you by African Hunting Gazette. Dive into the world of African Hunting Gazette. We're more than just a magazine. We're a quality journal presenting all aspects of hunting in Africa. Our pages take you on a journey, one hunt at a time. Axe Bullets. Meet your perfect hunting companion, Axe Bullets. African Express engineered monolithic bullets made in Africa for Africa for the hunter who demands precision and power. They spot a lone hippo bull, its massive body half submerged in the cool Caprivi waters. Drake, ever the ready adventurer, quickly prepared himself for this unexpected opportunity. With a steady hand and laser-like focus he took aim.
The thrill of the hunt gives way to a sense of accomplishment and relief. But this is not just about the thrill, it's about balance and respect for nature. None of the meat will go to waste. In the heart of Caprivi, one hippo provides sustenance for local villages, ensuring their survival for the next two weeks. This is conservation hunting at its finest, a testament to the sustainable practices of conservation hunting. All right, so we uh, we rolled up and we saw this guy in the water, so we parked off on the uh, the bank on the other side. Um, got up there, laid down. Um, he was kind of bobbing in and out of the water, um, you know, going down to feed and coming back up. So um, just laid down, waited for a shot for him to come up for just a second um, and um, was able to get him where I needed to get him. And um, we waited, I don't know, two, three hours for him to finally uh, surface. And uh, here he is. So I wanted to thank uh, Game Trackers uh, for doing all this. Um, it was a very exciting hunt. Um, this is a big boy, as you can see, so. With one hippo left, it's Mallory's turn to step up. The air is thick with tension as Mallory readies herself, her focus completely on the task at hand. The group gets within shooting distance. A hush falls over the scene and then... Mallory's aim is true, marking the end of a successful hunt. Meanwhile, Derek makes a dash for the Cape Buffalo. He's followed by Vessel, our trusty cameraman, capturing each heart-pounding moment. Despite their efforts, the Buffalo eludes them a testament to the unpredictability of the wild. 
As the day winds down, they return to camp, each step echoing with the thrill of the day's adventure. As the sun sets on the Caprivi Strip, our adventurers conclude their journey, their spirits high and memories full. We follow the trail of Hunter Scott, cameraman Barry, and his seasoned guides, Yako and Alan. These men are not just hunters, they are custodians of a tradition, a dance as old as time itself. So currently on our way to, uh, to the hunting area, it's going to stop off and top off with some fuel. Apparently this is the uh, last civilized destination that we'll see for the next couple of days. So take a nice long look at what uh, civilization looks like here in Botswana. Probably got another about two hour drive from then we're at our location. The sun sets on the untouched Botswana wilderness a land teeming with wildlife, and the heart throbs with the anticipation of the hunt. The air is thick with the raw, untamed essence of life in its wildest form. From the rustling of leaves under the foot of a stealthy leopard, to the distant trumpeting of an elephant, Botswana is a symphony of nature that leaves you breathless. They arrive at camp, a haven nestled in the wilderness. The simplicity of the tents belies the comfort within, a perfect setting for the Ooh, ultimate yes, elephant yes, hunting yes. experience. How are you? Good. Proper tour, proper shower, hot shower. Good. So, cool. Um, in your washing, put in the baskets. Okay. In the evenings when you get back uh, and you come to the tents just to freshen up, just dump your boots on top of the bench and my staff will give them a quick brush okay. to make sure they're nice and fresh for okay. the next day. What about okay. towels? Towels right there. on the bed. Okay. They give fresh towels every day. Um, in the tent here we've got charge ports. Anything you want to charge. Just remember the power that's coming out of the main plug is 220. 220. Yeah. Okay. So the charge ports are normal USB charge. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then if you don't want the big light, you've got a small one. Okay. So the light. Perfect. Well, good. Thank you. We've got some rolls. Freshly made in camp. We've got some mushroom soup. Cool. Please help yourself, sir. 
have to eat more than this? <laughs> yes, sir. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Afton Safari Lodge. Unfurl the adventure at Afton Safari Lodge, your gateway to the heart of Africa. We're the best start and finish to your African safari, providing a unique blend of comfort, convenience, and beauty. This land, pulsating with life, is home to an impressive population of elephants, with Botswana boasting the highest number of these majestic creatures in Africa. Good morning, good sir. How are you doing? Very well yourself. As dawn breaks, our hunters embark on their quest, scouring the terrain for elephant bull tracks. The hunt begins in earnest as our group, led by seasoned professionals Yako and Alan, navigate the vast expanse of Botswana's wilderness. It's a delicate dance between man and nature, a test of skill, patience, and endurance. Every broken twig, every crushed leaf, every faint footprint in the sand, these subtle signs are read like an open book by our seasoned hunters. He's, he's big on, he's big on body. Uh -huh. he's, got a, he's got a decent sized foot. But his um, age, he's still a, a, a young, young bull. Bull. he's a young big bull. Okay. So he's not, not, what we, not what we're looking for. Probably track him and get the 35 pound. While engrossed in tracing the path of elephants, our group stumbles upon an unexpected sight. A small herd of Gemsbok, their majestic horns gleaming in the morning sun. It's a fantastic sight, a testament to the diversity of life in the African wilderness. The hunt for elephants takes a back seat as the chase for Gemsbok begins. Botswana's diverse terrain plays a crucial role in this sudden shift. Its vast plains provide ample visibility while the dense bushes offer perfect cover for a stealthy approach. Let's go like this. Put the sticks just over here. It's about 300 yards. You're okay. In Botswana, elephants are abundant. Their population has been steadily increasing, testament to the country's stringent conservation efforts. This makes the tracking process slightly easier, but the challenge lies in identifying the perfect bull, one that's mature and isolated, ensuring a fair and ethical hunt. But as the saying goes, man proposes, nature disposes. The country's stable political climate ensures a safe and secure hunting experience, and its well-regulated hunting policies maintain ecological balance, making it an ideal destination for ethical hunting.
This landlocked gem in southern Africa is a hunter's paradise, and here's why. Firstly, Botswana is home to a vibrant and diverse ecosystem teeming with wildlife. From the majestic elephants to the elusive gemsbok, the richness of its biodiversity is simply unmatched. Secondly, the sheer vastness of Botswana's wilderness provides an unparalleled hunting experience. The expansive landscapes, untouched and untamed, offer the perfect setting for a thrilling chase. Lastly, the government of Botswana has always been supportive of sustainable hunting practices. Their conservation efforts ensure a healthy and thriving population of game, striking a balance between the thrill of the hunt and the preservation of nature. Now this year, my friends, this is what Africa's all about. In Botswana, every hunt is a journey back to our roots, a thrilling chase in the heart of the wilderness. Well, we just uh, came out of a rather easy stalk and a truly magnificent elephant bull, huge bodied bull out there. And uh, we got real close, um, certainly presented an opportunity to take a shot. But um, we determined that uh, he is not of age just yet. Um, he's got some ivory, but uh, for what we've seen that's sticking out, it's just not enough curve at the lip. Um, he still needs to go a little bit. And, uh, you know, and that, that's what it's all about. We're, um, you know, hunting old past productive bulls. We're very selective in what we're doing. Um, you know, every day is, uh, is a hunting day, but not every day is a shooting day. Most days ain't shooting days. But that's the fun of the stalk and the experience and everything goes that goes into it. And um, that's why we hunt. <laughs> Not too shabby, starting to look like something. The big track that they saw yesterday. Oh. Yeah, because the vehicle went over. Well, we're on day eight and um, we have uh, Scott Richardson here with us in uh, safari here in Botswana, in the northwestern part of Botswana. Um, we're hunting elephant. Going had been tough initially, but um, we've been onto quite a few bulls lately. Um, our other client and friend in camp has already gotten two bulls. Um, we're just waiting for luck to, to turn away. As Scott had um, said earlier, he named it perfectly today being in the middle of the safari, being humper day, so that's where we're at. And, um, but as it is with elephant hunting, things are always looking in the up. Every day is a new, new day, and um, that's exactly why we're doing it, Scott. What's your take on it so far? Well, it's been a wonderful time. Uh, the elephants have been a little slow, but we've been on a few of them, and just, it's going to get better. 
That's all I can say. The camp's good, the food's great, everybody's great. So it's going to get there. Oh, awesome. We'll get this day going and let's go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> What do you think? He's, he's definitely, definitely got a big, big body. Yeah. I mean, you can see how deep he's in the sand and the size of his track. Yeah. Um, the problem is there's not a lot of age on it. Right. He has got a little bit of wear, a little bit of wear, but um, I'm not 100% confident, but if we don't find anything on this next road, we'll come back and, and take a look, just to make sure. I'd rather, rather be safe than sorry, because he's not far. This is a small. Okay. And this is on the way to the water. That's why I went there. Yeah, so he's gone to the water. Um, yeah, the tracker's already going to go and see which way he went and what he's done. Okay. But I'm going to pick him up now and I'm going to go check the other road. We saw those two last night. Um, we'll from there. Okay. okay. Namibian bull. And then that style of footprint is the Botswana bull. Because the, the Botswana bulls spend a lot of time in Okavanga Delta, in the sand and the water. And they, they foot where differently to the Namibian bulls. Namibian bulls walk on rocks and so they get calluses. Oh, okay. So, hmm. yeah. The guys are just checking now to see where they had gone into the bush. If it's possible to, to follow the tracks or maybe they come out again. Head to the last one point. Oh, they didn't update it. Mm -mm. I'm trying to get them to update it, but they might be in this valley somewhere. They can't get us. Got a point of his elbow. Why don't you shoot about a, about a half a foot to half a foot above the point? V there. Yeah, at the top of that V. Yeah, that's where you want me to shoot. Right in there. Okay. Okay. If if not, I'll tell you shoot him on the front leg or just behind that little V. We know exactly what you're talking about then. Okay. Unless we're extremely close, and I'll say shoot him in the ear. Okay. 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 So, just catch your breath here. When we get there, we're gonna have to be quiet. We don't talk. That's why I wanna get this out the way now. Okay. okay. Follow me. The guys are gonna stay behind. Um, and then I'll get you as close as I can. If we're gonna shoot, it's gonna be a quick thing because okay. of the wind. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna work with the wind, get him as quick as possible, judge him as quick as possible, and I'm gonna give you a, a judgment. And if you like it, or if you like the look of the elephant, go for it. Okay. So just just a forewarning, because of the wind swelling. If we get the wind right, we've got 30 seconds. Okay. So we get in there, we're going to make a quick decision and then get out or chase him off, whatever. Yeah. Okay. But you won't fight. Yes. I don't. So don't stress. So we're left with um, 1.2 kilometers. Okay. Which is less than a mile. Okay. To get to the guys. So once we get to them, we'll work out where's the elephant. Um, I'm going to take off my backpack. Um, and then whatever extra weight you have that you want to carry with, we take off. Okay. And we'll go in quickly. All right. Yes. Sort it. This is good. The guys say he's about the same thickness as JB's, but he's long. JB's first one. one. The first one, yeah. I get it. It's a little bit of JB Alland. I get it. I get it. It's a little bit of JB Alland. Okay. He says he thinks they, they're longer than the first one. He says they're about the same thing. Okay. So let's go take a look. Yeah.
Yeah, he's done. Huh? That was self defense. <laughs> that was self defense. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit, man. I think, um, the one thing about them fucking thorns that time. Fuck <laughs> 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 me. Lost my hat and everything. <laughs> Fuck it. That was close. <laughs> that was close. Jeez. <laughs> That'll fucking make your day. <laughs> Shit. You alright now? Yeah, I'm alright. Fuck that. Let's go look at him. I'm alive. Yeah? Yeah, let's go look at him. See my hat? See what he's doing. Oh, cool. Cool, man. What was that? Can you take a little change? Hey! Can you hear me? That was close, boys. That was close. That was fucking close. That was close. That was close. That was one of the closest. This is one of the classes I've been involved in. I'm going to I wonder why it's so mad. Now, Mr. Scott, what we're going to do is we're going to go walk down. We're going to take an elephant path and go back to the village. Remember where the, where the cattle crawls are? Uh-huh. Um, it's only about two kilometers from here. Okay. So we're going to walk down there and then uh, Robert's going to come around with a cruiser and pick us up. And then we're going to drive straight to Kaikai village. Okay. And Kaikai village, and we have to phone the Department of Wildlife. Uh -huh. We've got the government scout with us. Uh -huh. He's witnessed everything. Um, and then we're going to phone the Department of Wildlife, ask them what do they want us to do. Okay. And then they're going to tell us whether they want to come inspect or whether they'll just say chop the ivory and bring the ivory. Yeah. So it's up to them what they decide to do. Okay. So I've got good terms with them, and we'll see what they say. If they say chop the ivory, then Robert will come back tomorrow, and he'll chop out the ivory. Um, if they say they want to come and inspect, then obviously I have to come with to inspect yeah. and you have to bear witness. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Whatever you need. All right. Hey. 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 As the sun dips below the horizon, our hunters return to camp, their hearts heavy with the day's experiences, the thrill of the chase, the encounter with the Gemsbok, the adrenaline coursing through their veins. These are moments that will forever be etched in their memories. I was telling him, he said, we gotta get you an elephant. And I said, you know, right now that getting an elephant isn't all that fucking important to me anymore. Yeah, it's been alive. It's fucking happy. <laughs> it's uh, it's strange how your perspectives change, yeah. eh? I mean, I just living through that was kind of like you can't fucking replace that either. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but I told Janet last night we were talking. I said, you know, getting a damn elephant isn't as important as it was, you know. Just <laughs> two things happened. One, the most important one is nobody's hurt. And two, it's an experience that nobody, very few people have lived or seen or experienced. So, I mean, yeah. It's just kind of like you said, perspective. You just say, well, whatever happens now, I'm just going to go home. Be happy. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, uh, it is, it's always a, uh, 
I won't say life changing, but it's definitely an eye opening experience. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly a good way to put it. Just and look look around and go, fuck, just be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Stop complaining so much. You know, you can't you were thinking, you know, he's going to stand there, stand there and don't do do anything and then he started yelling, ah, ah, ah you know. I don't know how many films I've seen that, and they fucking stop. You know, and you're kind of sitting there waiting for that to happen, and then all of a sudden you realize, fuck, it ain't happening. He's not stopping. I mean, you're just, I mean, all kinds of shit are going through your head, but you're like, shit. And I mean, fuck. I always remember that fucking head felt like it was right, right here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was so big. Yeah. I mean, it was close, man. <laughs> I mean, I would like to shoot it open, I guess, but it just doesn't even be anything near what it did. AHG Trophy Shipping. Streamline your hunting endeavors with AHG Trophy Shipping. We say, save money, hunt more. We're your trusted partner in delivering trophies safely and efficiently. In the wild expanse of Botswana, they found more than just a hunting ground. They found a playground that tested their skills, patience, and instincts. They found themselves in the heart of a land that pulses with the beat of nature, a land that offers the rarest of gifts, a hunt that is as challenging as it is rewarding. Each step they took, each breath they drew was a testament to their primal instincts. The satisfaction of a successful hunt, the close encounters with the wild, these experiences have left an indelible mark on them. In the next episode, shooting barns, TSX 350 grain. We join Henry and Todd as they hunt with Game Trackers Africa and Rockwood Conservation in South Africa. Hunting white rhino and the conservation effort behind that, as well as a full bag of Plains Game and multiple Cape Buffalo. Is that okay?